how is beer and money similar? Well, it's all how one guy named Otto Bremer became a very successful man. Otto was big into banking, and his brother was part owner of the Schmidt Brewery. The two were partners and helped each other succeed until the death of Adolf, his brother. He died during the Great Depression, and soon thereafter, the brewery went under. That is when Otto really took off in a strive to make every community an all-around better place. Otto Bremer has been a very successful businessman, and still is, due to the Otto Bremer Foundation. I currently work at Bremer and was very interested in the background of Bremer Bank and how it has been such a successful business. First, let's take our attention to how Otto Bremer got started in the Midwest. Otto and Adolf moved to the U.S. in the late 1800s and settled in Minneapolis, soon to be St. Paul, after finding out that Minneapolis had no jobs. Otto had just finished an apprenticeship in, in a German bank, so he was looking to find a job similar to that. He started looking for jobs right away. St. Paul was booming during this time and strategically was located for railroad traffic. He got a couple denials from some companies. He got tired of this very fast. A wholesale hardware company was next on his list. Margaret Gott, writer of article His Life of Legacy, says that he asked for work and the company denied him. And Otto came back with this quote, but I want to work. I want to begin at the foot of the ladder and you don't have to pay me until you find out if my work is worth it. Otto started the next day and he earned a paycheck at the end of the week. A few weeks later, he received a promotion and he was very upset that he did not get a pay increase with that. Soon thereafter, he started at the National American Bank as a bookkeeper. He soon rose over the next 13 years to chief clerk and was a major stockholder in the bank. His brother Adolf soon married Marie Schmidt, daughter of a local German brewer. Close, as, close in business, as in family matters, Otto followed his brother into the brewery. By 1901, the brothers each owned one quarter of the stock. Now let's take a look at how he was successful in the banking industry and in the city of St. Paul. In 1900, he was voted as city treasurer for a number of years. He also ran as a Democratic candidate for mayor of St. Paul. Unfortunately, he lost. Due to this, he decided to leave the political aspect. He resigned from the National German Bank and with, this, and with his brother assumed entire management of the Schmidt Brewery. Otto as secretary and treasurer and Adolf as president. Owner of the Schmidt Brewery, Jacob Schmidt, died in 1910, leaving his half of the business to Adolf's wife, Marie. This left Otto, Adolf, and Marie with most of the stock. With profits from this, Otto bought into the American National Bank and in 1913 was elected to its board of directors. In 1921, the president of the American National Bank died and Bremer was elected as chairman until the 1940s. By 1929, the American National Bank had become the second largest bank in St. Paul. Bremer was a major stockholder owning 2,000 shares of the 4,000 that they had. He was then considered the largest investor in bank stocks west of Chicago. Bremer's banking philosophy, also written by Margaret Galt, goes like this. To protect the security of investments by scattering them over a wide region in comparatively small amounts and thus lessening the risk of losing them. To put the interests of the country banks and their depositors first, and his own interests second. To ensure a gradual but slow increase of invested capital through a conservative dividend policy rather than a policy of higher temporary return in dividends or interest. Finally, a maxim. True banking must be kept on a firm basis and cannot deviate from a reasonable rate of income 
and investments well secured. He continued this through the Great Depression. Even though Otto was very successful during this time, there were also some struggles. During the Great Depression, Otto's investments in home banks had bought him to the edge of bankruptcy. Otto's brother Adolf then stepped in and pledged 200 shares of the brewery to secure the necessary portion of Otto's debt. With this, he was also able to buy out the local banks that were going under. In 1939, Adolf Bremer died. Otto then watched the brewery go under, although he never wanted it to. He sold all the assets until eventually there were none, trying to save it. He said that he would never let this happen to his banks, so he had to come up with a plan. Some sort of trust, an estate holding company. This is when the Otto Bremer Foundation kicked off. Most of you have heard of Bremer Bank and what a nonprofit organization is or does, but only a few of you knew the answer to what percentage the Otto Bremer Foundation was owned by Bremer Bank or what percentage the Otto Bremer Foundation owned Bremer Bank. The answer is 92%. The other 8% is owned by shareholders. Otto Bremer thought, if I have an organization that donates money back to the community and the banks are forced to give profit to the organization, we will have a thriving community. Now let's take a look at what the Otto Bremer Foundation is doing for local communities. The foundation serves as a mandatory money collector from Bremer Bank and gives that money back to the community in the form of grants. In 2014, the foundation was able to give approximately $43 million in grants and approximately $1.9 million just in the Chippewa Valley alone. In conclusion, Otto Bremer has been a very successful businessman and still is due to the Otto Bremer Foundation. He knew what hard work was all about when he moved from Germany. He was continuously successful during the Great Depression and is still successful due to the amount that the Otto Bremer Foundation can give back to the community each year. What is your goal for being successful? Mine, all it takes is hard work.